Now, during the last 48 hours, I've spoken to dozens of people, but everybody I've spoken to has been from the boxing business. World champions, promoters, trainers, journalists, broadcasters of some description. I think it's only fair, after 757 interviews, to finally speak to someone from the MMA world. So, Dan, it's great to have you here. That was Dan Hardy. Now, earlier on tonight, no, I'm only kidding. We're going to speak to you, Dan. Don't be silly. <laughs> you knew that was coming, didn't Love you? It. Love Listen, I knew you knew it was coming. That's why you didn't even move. Um, Dan, um, I know, that, I know I've, I've read and heard some of the things uh, that you've said about this fight. Let me first get, what was your reaction when you heard it was made? I mean, made, made, not last April when people talked about it, when you actually heard it was made? I was surprised, honestly. I was surprised they managed to get it over the line. I was surprised that Tyson was opening himself up to this kind of fight you know, and, and giving Ngannou the opportunity. I expected probably a warm-up fight for Ngannou against another big name, but maybe not something quite as big as this. Do you, have you heard room, any rumours I mean, on your MMA grapevine? Because I know that you're really connected. I, I might be selling you short by just saying, this is Dan Hardy from the MMA world. That's selling you short. Trust me, I know that. So have you heard any rumours? Has Ngannou had some really competitive spars, which are borderline fights? Have you heard anything like that? Well, can't you tell me? I, I, I've, heard, I've heard that he's put the work in. I've heard that they've brought a lot of new people into his camp to try and give him the kind of looks that he's going to get. But of course, that's going to be incredibly difficult with Tyson. Like, you've got to break Tyson's game down and, and work against it in parts, haven't you? Yeah. That's the only way you're going to find sparring partners to do it. For me, the biggest asset to him is bringing Mike Tyson in, a small heavyweight that had to work around the long, long lead hand of other fighters. If he can get a little bit of that peekaboo style into this fight, he might be able to get close enough to land. I mean, you could make a case if he could just get five or ten percent of Tyson's bit of movement. Obviously, but Tyson had one thing that no disrespects to to the big lad Angano. He had that little bit of he had that that muscle speed, that that real incredible speed. I mean, Angano's not as slow as people are making out, but he's not as fast as Mike Tyson. Well, no, I mean, absolutely Who is? not. Yeah, no, exactly, of course. No, I mean, the thing is with Ngannou, he moves very, very quickly, but that's going to run out very quickly as well, right? Yes. You can't keep putting your foot on the gas when you've got muscles like that because it runs out. Yes. But if he does put his foot on the gas and he is able to catch him, especially early in the fight, that's where it's going to make the difference. Like, for me, he's got to manage his pace here. Like, the challenge for boxing is not... He's not necessarily learning the skill set, he's learning the pace for him, right? Because I don't want him to be a boxer in this fight. If he comes in as a boxer, Tyson's going to toy with him. If he comes in as an MMA fighter but learns the pace of boxing, he might be able to get close to the chin. And finishes each round, not gas, finishes each round looking relaxed in the corner. And you know what I mean by that. When you look at, you do, you do the same, you do the thing in the octagon I do in the ring. You know, I want to look at the fighter in, when he's sitting down. I want to really go to because if he or she's really gulping, they're in trouble, even if it's only the second round. So I want to see Ngannou assuming it goes a few rounds. I want to see him going back to the corner looking calm with his shoulders down and relaxed. Now, let me ask you this, and someone's asked, I've been asked this a couple of times on my, in my other duty, the BBC stuff I do. People have said to me, Bunsy, um, what's to stop Ngannou doing what he's been doing for the last 15 years, all of the MMA stuff? And I'd never thought about asking the question, Dan. So I'll ask you, what's to stop him doing that? I don't think he will, but I'm asking you. You know, I think, I mean, his dream was always to be a boxer. But he walked into an MMA gym kind of by accident. He wants to be a boxer. I think he wants to prove that he can box. You know, I think he wants to prove that he can stand in there with the best heavyweight on the planet and hold his own. And I think, I mean, I think that's a big risk, of course. He's, his strength is his unpredictability, the surprise factor. But I, I think he's going stick to stick to a boxing game plan and try and prove everybody wrong. Now, I've been around a lot of athletes, Dan, and I know you have. Um, is Francis Ngannou the nicest athlete in the world in any sport? I don't just mean in MMA or boxing. He's unbelievable, isn't he? And he's all the good he does. I mean, surely he's got a bad side, apart from when he gets inside the ring on the octagon. Well, I mean, well, think about this, right? So his first opponent in the PFL, he's negotiated $2 million for his opponent, right? Wow, that's... Whoa, that's great stuff. Right now, so yeah, he's a really nice guy, but that for me is him making peace with punching someone in the head as hard as he can, right? He wants to make sure they're getting paid so he don't feel bad about taking them out. So yeah, he's a really nice guy, but if, if he straps the gloves on and you're the target, you're doomed, you're doomed. Unless you maybe tie some fury and you can stay away from it. Listen, Dan, we're going to have plenty more discussions, plenty more chats. That's Dan Hardy, not just of the MMA, very much the MMA voice.